As the Rainbow Road continues to be laid, we need to stop the alien inhabitants from blocking the way. This is no mean feat, as we will need a transparent layer of 15,000 tinted blocks of silicon dioxide. Made from its raw material sand and thermally treated, we need to construct a new huge glass foundry. May the smoke of industry take us forward on the legacy SMP server. To all the geeks and nerds out there, welcome back to another episode on the Legacy SMP server. We're going to make some more progress today on the Rainbow Road. This thing right here, which we did last episode. But uh, as you can see, we've put down all these torches to make it spawn proof. We need to change that. We're going to cover all of this with glass. And for that, we need a brand new super smelter, which I have spent quite a few <laughs> quite a few days uh, designing in creative and we're going to build it up today and yeah so we need the glass for this layer and of course over here we also need to build out uh, this ring as well with the rainbow road and cover that in glass as well so we need about 15,000 glass blocks and yeah that's going to need uh, <laughs> that's going to need a super smelter uh, to deal with that and create all the glass so let's head on over to the overworld and yeah let's get this project rolling Vigo Sand Express. Let's check this out. I think I know what's inside. Yes, a bunch of sand. So I put the word out that uh, for the uh, for the Rainbow Road, I need a whole bunch of sand. And I'm going to obviously get some myself. But I think as it's a community project, maybe everyone can donate a bit of sand. And Vigo has come in already with a, with a barrel of sand. So I think I'm going to set up maybe over here a little drop off area for any anyone who wants to donate some sand. We're going to need about 10 chocolate boxes, I reckon. So if everyone you know can contribute maybe a chocolate box worth of sand, we'll We'll stick it over here and then we can get it all smelting once we've got the super smelter all built and then any any sand that we need that doesn't get donated we can go off and get that ourselves as well now where are we going to build the super smelter well i'm thinking over here so we probably need to clear out a bit of area here make it a bit flat because i think what i'd like to do is make the floor of the the super smelter the same level as this floor here just to give us some options later on where we might want to link up whatever this building is to the uh, to the smooth super smelter building over here so yeah so We've got to probably dig out some of this to allow that to happen and then probably going to start it i don't know somewhere like here i guess to give us plenty of space between that building and this building so we're going to have a sorting system here i guess some kind of storage so we need a bit of space here for that and then a bit of space in between buildings and then the smelter over here so let me uh, yeah i think what i'll do is i'm going to dig it down a bit dig down a bit of space to make room i've already done all the all the resource collection i had to buy a whole bunch of iron from the shopping district because we don't have an iron farm yet that's something we need to build pretty soon but so uh, yeah let's let's get clearing and then we can talk about this this uh, furnace array and how it's going to work the land has been cleared and i've laid down a few furnaces you know just a few so along here we have 40 furnaces 40 fur that is pretty good but what's better than 40 furnaces 80 furnaces we've got another 40 on this side as well <laughs> so look at this this is how big it's going to be and floor level is going to be up a few blocks uh, around this level around here yeah, it's going to be big. And of course, you can see in my hotbar, you may have wondering why did, I, why did I need to buy a load of iron? Well, hoppers, because of course, each of these 80 furnaces requires three hoppers, one underneath to take the items out, one in the top to put items in, and one at the back for the fuel. And of course, 80 furnaces times three is 240, 240 hoppers. Wowzers. So the next job is to put all these in. So I guess I'll start off with, with the bottom and yeah, go along like this. I've got to hold shift so I don't, you know, uh, go into the inventory of the uh, of the furnace. So let me get all these hoppers in, and then we can do the next bit. Here are the input and the output chests of the furnace array all in place and ready to go. So I've done some measuring just to make sure I've got everything in the right place. So yeah, that is, that's that. So the top chest up there, that's where we're going to deposit our shulker boxes of items that need to be smelted. They're going to go through the system and come back and they're going to be, be deposited in here. So we end up with shulker boxes full of items that are all smelted up. And here you can see I've added all of the, all of the hoppers, uh, all three hoppers for each, each of the furnaces. 240 hoppers all in place ready to go now with this uh, with this furnace this furnace array i've uh, this is not super optimized you know to the tick to be super efficient or anything like that um 
But what I've tried to do here is uh, embrace the embrace the idea of movement because we want to see lots of movement in our base, lots of things going around, moving, all that kind of stuff. So what's going to happen here is let me talk you through it uh, really quickly is we're going to have a shulker box unloader up here. So that's going to take the shulker boxes from this chest, unload them into some minecarts. Then we're going to see minecarts going across the hoppers to load up the furnaces. And it's going to come back, pick up some more items. Obviously, all the items are going to get smelted, going to come through these hoppers and into a bunch of droppers. And all of these furnaces are going to eject their items all at the same time into some water streams. We'll see those. They'll come underneath the floor and return back over here uh, to this side, which they'll then go into a shulker box loader using the empty shulker boxes from the shulker box unloader. <laughs> and then those shulker boxes will then be returned to this chest right here for, uh, yeah, for, 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 for picking up. And of course, we're going to mirror that on both sides so we can smelt things super quick. So our 10 shulker boxes of sand and shouldn't take too long, hopefully. <laughs> of course, uh, uh, furnace arrays generally are, are, are capped by how many furnaces uh, you have. So 80 furnaces, not, not the biggest, but not the smallest either. So I think a good, a good happy medium, I feel. So yeah, that's that. So I've got all the items over here. I've got all the resources, which took some time, but yeah, we are ready to go. So I think now it's a case of just building up each component individually, and I'm gonna color code each different segment so we can see uh, what, uh, yeah, what blocks make up which part. And yeah, as I build each component, I'll talk you through it. And the first component is in, probably the uh, the simplest one of the system. But uh, yeah, let's, let's talk about this one as we go through this step by step. So I've also laid the floor down. This is uh, basically the floor level which lines up uh, with that floor level over there. So here we are. This is an item elevator. So some of you have probably seen this before. Um, I did something like this similar uh, over there where we got where we get the, the gold and the flesh comes up through this tube. And uh, I had a few comments asking people how that how that works. So I thought I'd give you a give you a quick show of it here. So basically, this is our input chest and input in here. We can put a whole bunch of our shulker boxes uh, with stuff that needs to be smelted. Uh, we've got a hopper here that goes this way. We'll also have another one this way that goes this way. And so the items that are in here will get distributed. Half go that way and half will go that way. And then behind there, we have a dropper. So all the items will collect in there. And then behind the dropper, we have a little bit of redstone here. So a comparator to detect that we've got some, got some items. That goes through into this block. There's a piece of redstone dust on top of that block, which goes into this repeater, back into there. And that creates a clock. And uh, some redstone here, which powers this block, which then powers the dropper again. So this dropper will then drop its items into this block here. So this is a solid, solid tube up there in a cross shape. And so when an item gets put inside another block, it uh, it tries to go up. And of course, then it's inside another block and it tries to go up into another block all the way up till it gets to the water stream. And then it goes into into that chest over there. Now, why have I done this rather than a rather than a bubble elevator? Well, just because it's uh, easier to see the items, pretty much. Um, you could put water in here, but that would water does uh, make it harder to see the items, and also it goes up super fast, and so we wouldn't see them. So, um, part of what I'm trying to do here is to make it good to look at. So yeah, that is what we're up to. So the next thing now is to add the, the shulker box unloader over here. So I guess we'll do that circuit next. And the night's coming. Better sleep. Look who just showed up. We're busy building this furnace array and this guy just spawned with a couple of llamas. Now, of course, we're in the competition to get as many points as we can from wandering trader heads and llama heads. One point for one of these guys and half a point for one of these. So yeah, we need to go and check on our farm a bit later on. But uh, yeah, let's uh, choppy choppy, shall we? Hiya! <laughs> oh yeah, and they spit at me. Disgusting habit. Get out of here. There we are, some more points to the tally. The second component is in, and it's this one, the blue one. This is the shulker box unloader. All right, let me uh, let me show you it in, in action before we talk through it. So here we have a shulker box, and it's got a, you know some sand in it. So let's break this, and we'll stick it into the input chest. Of course, it's going to go into our item elevator, go through the glass all the way up into water stream, into our chest, and then there we go. It's dispensed and it empties everything, and then it falls down here. There it is. <laughs> So it falls down this tube right here. So this uh, this shulker box unloader is not my design. This is a design by Samos the Sage, who has been on this channel before. Uh, when we did the dissecting Minecraft series with methods, uh, we uh, we put out redstone challenges now and again, and Samos would pretty much always um, give us a solution. He's really good at redstone. So go check out his channel. There'll be links in the description. He does a lots of uh, lots of cool stuff, uh, particular storage at the moment, which I'm uh, having a good look at. <laughs> so uh, yeah, check him out there. But yeah, yeah, basically this is his uh, this is his design. Now I've made one slight tweak to it and that is to do the uh, the dispensing of the shulker box over here so i've just added uh, some observers over here so when the shulker box gets broken here a few observers 
uh, go across here with, with enough delay that they trigger this dispenser, uh, this, this dropper should I say, uh, with a shulker box that drops down here. And so when it comes down here, this shulker box is going to get picked up eventually by the shulker box loader. So the same shulker boxes that you uh, dispense into the system will end up getting filled up with the, with the smelted items down here in a loader. So that is the plan. Uh, yeah, so as I said, we're going to have um, items go through here. So the sand should be in that in that hopper. We check that out. There we go. There's the five sand in there. So there's going to be a minecart under here that's going to pick up a bunch of items, and then when it's when it's filled up, it's going to send itself on its way over all of these hoppers. All right. So that is the next thing to do. I think probably work on the uh, the minecart the minecart uh, component next. But before we do that, I think I want to head over to the wandering trader farm since that guy was here a minute ago. Uh, drop his head off and yeah, see the state of play. Here we are at the Wandering Trader Farm and I've made a few changes here and there. You can probably see uh, from the last time you saw it, there's been a few modifications. Nothing too much to see here, but there's a lot to see up above. But uh, I'm not going to show you my secret weapon just yet. This is going to come into, into effect uh, a bit later on. So we've got the heads in a hot bar. Let's get them into the chest. Here is where we're storing the trader heads. So if we take a look at this, we've got 12 uh, wandering traders so far and a bunch of the llamas as well. They're half a point each for the llamas and one point for the wandering trader. So that's 17 points we've got here so far, plus another one we've got today. So that's uh, 18 and another another <laughs> llama, so another half. So 18 and a half so far is how many points we're up to. Now, um, I've made some modifications, as I said. Now, what would definitely help us is if we knew what everyone else was up to, what everyone else had in their points tally. That could definitely help us make sure we get enough points to win. Because I'm not giving up. I think Lime is well ahead of us. He's got like 30 points, I think, so far. Um, obviously, Sausage has got his Jubus 50, which uh, may not count, but they might. I'm not quite sure how that's going to go. Uh, but we need to definitely ramp up the points we've got. So, but yeah, as I said, I've got a secret weapon. I've got an idea. But I think maybe we should go over to the lodge and maybe set up something temporary where everyone can put their heads so we can see uh, what's the state of players. And this is my plan. So I've laid something out temporarily and I'm putting down all of my heads just like this <laughs> in a big tower. So here is the lodge. Here's the lodge where we signed up and I've just created this little courtyard over here. Got some fences around or some walls around the outside to give it some protection at least for some mobs. Uh, but basically here is a visual way to see how many heads you've actually got. So what I've done is I've got the, the diamond blocks for where we paid and I've created this little uh, this little thing for each, each person. So, so far we've got 18 and a half points and here are all of our heads so we can see how high they go. And of course my name is on it and I've done this for every single person. So all of their, all of their the diamond blocks they paid is now out here labeling their particular their particular shrine I suppose <laughs> so hopefully now what we can do is when everyone lays all their heads down we can just see very easily visually who is in the lead and how high these heads are actually going to go <laughs> that might be actually quite funny but anyway there we go that is where we're up to so hopefully the others will do that I'll stick a message in our discord and let everyone know that they can now display display their heads and actually this is an advantage for us because if we can see what everyone else is doing, we can tailor our design, our uh, our shenanigans we're going up to, uh, to hopefully hopefully win. And it's getting dark again. Right, let's get out of here. We're back at the furnace array and I've added the next component. And this is the yellow one. This is all about item distribution to the furnaces. So as you can see here, we've got a bunch of rails that uh, are on top of these hoppers all the way down here, the powered rails. So the gold farm is definitely coming helpful with that. And there's a block at the end. Uh, so when the minecart goes down there, it will bounce and come back again. But let's talk about this bit first. So here we have our item, our sugar box unloader, as we've seen before. And there is the hopper where all of our items will go. They will point into this hopper minecart, which will get filled up with items. Uh, behind that, we have a comparator. And this, uh, this minecart is sitting on a detector rail. So we can read how many items are in there. Once it's filled up, because we've got a redstone block next to the comparator, once it's totally filled up with items, that will activate the comparator. And there's some there's some redstone on top of those blocks. So you just about to see that, which come around to this fence gate and open. So once the once the hopper minecart is totally filled up, the fence gate opens, the minecart goes down, down this track, and it will go, it will basically go this way, it will go round here, round here, and then down that way. And as it crosses on top of all of these hoppers, it will distribute one item uh, per hopper, get to the end, bounce back and distribute some more. So of course, once it gets back here, it will still have items inside it. So we don't want it to go back here to fill up for more just yet. So what this is what this circuit here does, as it goes over this detector rail, we can see whether it's empty or not. And if it's got items inside it, we'll see that. This will deactivate this torch, deactivate, deactivate this line, which will change this uh, this uh, this track right here. So let's, uh, let's simulate that if I, if I, in fact, if I go here and break this redstone, 
you can see the the line changes so the minecart will basically go back around here back around here and then off its way again so it's going to continually go backwards and forwards until it's totally empty once it's totally empty it will then go back up here ready for more items Woo. <laughs> Hopefully that made some kind of sense. But uh, before we carry on, let me tell you why we have 40 furnaces over here, because it's all about uh, the items. So this uh, my cart will hold five stacks of 64, which is 320 items. And if you divide 320 by 40, you get eight. So each furnace will be evenly distributed with eight items per furnace. And of course that is gonna be good for our fuel. Uh, spoiler alert, charcoal. <laughs> so we could use charcoal as our fuel source. So that means one piece of charcoal will be able to burn all of the uh, all of the items uh, without any wastage of the fuel. So that is going to be good. And that's why we've got 40 over here and of course another 40 on that side. So this system is designed to work in uh, batches of five stacks. Um, if you put in less than five stacks, then they'll be held in this minecart for the next run. But that's okay. Uh, we're, we're kind of uh, designing this with a uh, bulk in mind, bulk smelting. Uh, we're definitely going to be smelting charcoal boxes at a time. And if there's uh, like an odd number, but then we'll get them the next time around. So that is that is no bother. All right, so that's that. I think the next thing then is to deal with the items once they're smelted, and that means uh, yeah, some I some uh, some water some water streams and stuff underneath here. The pink component is in, that is the next one, and that is dealing with items that are smelted out of the furnaces. So as you can see here, the furnaces go into these droppers underneath, and uh, once the droppers uh, spit out their items, they'll go into these water streams that will take them all the way down to the end. They go around the corner and then come shrooshing back this way under us, over to over to here that's where they end up and then that's where they're going to be reunited with the sugar boxes so there's the sugar box loader the empty ones come down here going they will go into a contraption here where we'll fill them back up again with the smelted items and then they'll be deposited back into this chest is the plan so why are we using droppers here well in a previous array I've done, I've had hoppers underneath pointing into each other, um, but they end up backing up and getting pretty slow. So I thought uh, we'd do it this way. So first of all, it's a bit faster, I think, but also we'll get to see items moving around. And that's what it's all about. You know, a bit of fun, a bit of uh, movement and seeing things in action. So once these uh, once these droppers have got an item in from the, uh, from the furnace, how do we spit them out? Well, we're going to spit them out all at the same time. And that's because over here on this last furnace, this has got a comparator on it. So as soon as this one is smelted, and of course, this is going to be the last one to smelt because it's the last one on the line so once it's uh, smelted that means all of them would have smelted and so from this comparator it goes into a block into some redstone and of course then we've got a repeater line here that activates some blocks all the way behind all of the droppers so then they'll all get activated at the same time and spit out their items and that should look pretty cool hopefully <laughs> if it works <laughs> but yeah that is the pink line that is uh, that is done so I think the next thing then is to do this contraption here which is to reunite the sugar boxes with the items and then, yeah, we're pretty much done. Well, we've got the fuel to deal with, but uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. This is the final circuit. This is the shocker box loader. This is the red one. And this is not my design. This is by a guy called Hex Regulus. A uh, really cool channel. I've used this uh, shocker box loader on my channel before, and it's really cool. So links in the description. Go and check out his channel if you want to see how to build it. But uh, I've added this stuff down here. So when the items come into this water stream, they go into this uh, this small dropper elevator. Uh, I've got a little bit of a delay there with the uh, the piston and the observer to stop that going up and down all the time uh, in the speed of a, of a hopper. Uh, but then the items will make their way into the shocker box once it's filled up it will be broken by this uh, piston above and then the shocker box goes into this uh, into these hoppers underneath into a dropper underneath the chest and there's a little a little thing here that i've done so if there's anything in the anything in the dropper the uh, the comparator will see it and then uh, this these observers will then uh, activate the block underneath which uh, triggers it which then puts the puts the shocker box into the chest so that's it. So items will come through here, get filled up, and yeah, end up, end up in the chest. So that's all of the components done. The only other thing to talk about is the orange circuit, which I've done over here. This is for the fuel. So for today, we're not going to make this automatic. Uh, we're just going to fill this uh, mica up with fuel and send it on its way, and it will go around on a track over the uh, hoppers along the back and fill up all the items, all of the all of the furnaces with fuel. Now I'm thinking that we're going to use charcoal as a fuel, so I think at some point over here we're going to have a tree farm. And I've got an idea for somehow getting logs to automatically go into the smelter if it's needed to produce charcoal. And then we'll probably have maybe some hoppers over here, some item filters uh, to detect any kind of charcoal that comes through the system. And that, that will automatically then get rooted up here for the fuel. But uh, we're going to do that another day, the fuel source. But we can we can manually fill that up just for today for, for some testing. But yeah, that is pretty much it. <laughs> this side at least. Now we've got to do the whole thing again on this side. Oh man. <laughs> but then once we've done that, we should be able to smelt up our shocker boxes pretty quickly. So, all right, let's get this built up and then, yeah, we can give it a full test.
Any ideas? And with that, the furnace array is complete. We are done. Well, almost. We still have to work on the on the on the fuel system. We're going to use charcoal. That's going to be our fuel of choice. Um, but at the moment, it's just me putting charcoal or putting coal in these uh, in these in these minecarts and sending them off. So I've done that already, and we've got a total of six coal uh, in every in every furnace so far. But yeah, we need to definitely work on the fuel system. Uh, but that will be another day. But uh, we've uh, we've got some sand from the other peeps, so we've got uh, four sugar boxes here full of sand. Uh, that was. Uh, a uh, two from uh, sliced lime, one from Vigo, and one from sausage. So that is all good. And over here, we've got a whole bunch of logs that I've, I've farmed up. I've been using the, uh, the 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 big the big spruce trees. So we've got that, and these are going to be our seed fuel. We're going to uh, smoke these up and get ourselves a bunch of charcoal. Now these are in uh, batches of 25 stacks. So there's 25 stacks in there, 25 in there, and five in there. And that is because, uh, as we said earlier, this this smelter is designed to be work to be used with multiples of five stacks of items. Now you can put other other, other numbers in but what will happen is uh, any leftovers or any 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 parts of fives will be left in the minecart for the next time around so but that's all good so what we should do now is uh put, put these uh, uh logs in the chest and hopefully this thing will work but uh before we do that guess who showed up as i was building this thing and then he showed up again It's time for the big test. Let's see if this actually works. So here's our input chest. Let's put our sugar boxes in and see what happens. They should go up the item elevator and they should go into, there we go. They're into the sugar box unloaders. Yes, okay. So this one had the two sugar boxes. So this one will run a bit longer, but uh, it's, we go up here, jump up here. Hopefully we should see items. Oh yes, they're going in. Okay, it's gonna take a little bit of time for this to fill up, but once it fills up totally, then this should get released. Oh, there they go. There they go. They're off. They're off. Yes. <laughs> Look at that. Bounces back. That one bounces back. And yes, this is awesome right now. Let's have a look at this. Uh, once the first set of items smelt, they should all come out at the same time. Just take a few seconds. Takes 10 seconds. There they go. Look at that. <laughs> and if we come over here, this side has happened as well. Look at all the charcoal. Yes. Oh, dip. <laughs> Brilliant. So now every 10 seconds, they all pop out there we go look at that brilliant and now of course they come down this waterway over here into these shulker box loaders on each side we can hear hit the clicking and in this shulker box we should have the items coming in oh yes so on this side hopefully yes okay so once those shulker boxes get filled up they will be broken and will end up in this chest right here so this is working look at this ah oh, i love it i love it when it will come out at the same time ready ready Nope. <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant stuff. All right. Hopefully there's enough fuel in here. So I think I did my calculation correctly that the, this uh, seed, the, the seeds, uh, the seeds coal that we've got in there to smelt these logs up will be enough. And now this charcoal should be enough uh, to smelt up our 10 sugar boxes of sand. So I'm going to hang here for a bit and uh, make sure all this is working. Then I'm going to head over to the desert and mine up the remaining sand that we need. And as we mine the sand up, I've got a couple of things just to mention. Uh, first of all, we hit a big milestone this week, and that is 70,000 subscribers. So a massive thank you to everyone for all the support. It's been absolutely crazy this year. Since we, since we started Legacy in particular, uh, we've seen a big growth in the channel. So that is super great. So thank you to everyone uh, for all of your support. And also, while I'm on the thank yous, thank you to everyone that responded uh, to last week's question, which was all about scheduling of YouTube videos. And it sounds like most people aren't that bothered, <laughs> which is great. Um, so what I think 
what I'm going to try and do is continue to get my Sunday episodes out as I always have done and um, there might be a little bit later in the day uh, just to give me a bit more time a bit more flexibility during the week and if I can get another video out during the week then I will try and do that but if not then it'll just be just be the Sunday episodes so thanks again to everyone uh, for all of their comments and suggestions and uh, and feedback that was really great great to see great to see and hear and yeah let's get back to minding up all this sand We have enough fuel, the sand has been gathered. Now it's time to put these 10 chocolate boxes in here and hopefully it's gonna work. So here we go. Oh yes, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes, yes. <laughs> okay, and chocolate boxes, yes, been unloaded. Okay, awesome. I guess I've gotta hang here and wait for this to happen, but uh, yeah, this should be pretty good. Okay, I've left it running for quite some time and it's working. It's actually working. <laughs> so if we can see the glass coming in underneath me and there it is, more batches coming across. And if we look in this chest, the output chest, we are getting choker boxes full of glass. Yes, awesome. So I've also got, gathered up a bunch of the dyes we need for the Rainbow Road so I can start uh, dyeing these up as they come in now. This is really cool. I'm really loving it. Look at this. And there he comes, yes. <laughs> So good, so good. Obviously glass is a little bit hard to see, but there you go, you can see them both coming through on both waterways into their respective loaders. All right, so I'm gonna hang around here, wait until all this stuff is all smelted up, which shouldn't take too long now, dye it all up, and then get over to the Rainbow Road and start placing a few of these blocks. We're back in the end and it's time to lay down some glass. So we're not gonna get too far today, but just wanted to show you, we've got all of these shulker boxes full of colored glass. I did all the dyeing. So yeah, all 10 chocolate boxes went through the system and we've got two over here that are not dyed just yet. So we've got eight colors in total. So we've got the eight chocolate boxes here all colored up. But yeah, it worked brilliantly. The furnace worked absolutely brilliantly. So now it's a case of taking some glass and then plopping it down on the respective colors and obviously taking out the torches as we do. So this is gonna get all spool proofed. No, uh, no endermen are gonna give us any more problems at all. So yeah, this is gonna be me for the next few hours, I guess. <laughs> Try not to place them incorrectly. But yeah, that is that, I think. So I've laid down a couple of colors and uh, it's looking really good. Look at this. So walking around here, we've got torches still on the outside, but uh, we'll be replacing that with, uh, with the, uh, the, the quartz stairs in due course. But yeah, this is gonna be super cool. Look at this. Oh yes, it's going to be good. It's going to be really good. But that is enough for this episode. If I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, then please hit the like button. And if you're new, then feel free to subscribe. And if you've got any comments or suggestions, then get in that comment section. All right, my geeks. Until next time, I will see you later.